Okay, good evening everyone. I am Priya, one of the organizing co-chairs and I welcome you all to the second day of week three of IEEE Symposium on Data Analytics and Internet of Things. IEEE Victorian section presents this symposium in collaboration with Computation Intelligence Society, IoT Community and University of Melbourne Student Branch. Just to quickly run you through the schedule of the symposium, it's going to run for five more weeks until 19th of November with events happening only on Tuesdays, Wednesdays and Thursdays, either as afternoon or evening sessions. Since you're registered for this week, you will be on our emailing list and will receive emails about the event schedule for all of the following weeks. You can also follow our website and social media pages for more updates. So today is the second tutorial talk of week three on Internet of Things and the topic is convergence of big data, cloud computing and IoT. The talk will be for around 45 minutes with last 15 minutes dedicated for question and answer session. Please use the question answer tab at the bottom of the window to post your questions. So we have Dr. Meena Jha as the speaker for this event. Meena is a researcher and educator in the field of computer science and IT in the School of Engineering and Technology at Central Queensland University in Sydney, Australia. Her research interests include in particular, big data and artificial intelligence, expert systems, business intelligence, real-time analytics and internet of things to name a few. She's also passionate about women in STEM and is working on how to improve and enhance women's power in the STEM field. Hence, she's a co-founder of Wing Tech, Women in Technology, a group dedicated in promoting and supporting girls and women in STEM. Wing Tech features two interlinked, interlinked actions um, aimed at increasing the number of girls and women participating in STEM through school programs and a series of networking events across New South Wales region for women STEM professionals. Thank you, Mina, for joining us today. The floor is all yours. Thank you, Priya. Thank you for such a wonderful uh, introduction. Uh, I'm impressed. Right. Welcome, guys. Uh, as Priya said, this is under IEEE Symposium on Data Analytics and Internet of Things 2020. Uh, Today's topic, I'll be talking about uh, convergence of big data, cloud computing, and IoT. Uh, the Internet of Things is becoming the next internet-related uh, revolution. And it basically, why? Because it is allowing billions of devices to be connected and you know these devices can communicate with each other. And they can share information that improves the quality of our daily lives. On the other hand, cloud computing, what it provides it on demand, convenient, scalable network access, which makes it possible to share computing resources. So enabling it allows dynamic integration from various data sources, which these IoT devices are you know, collecting. There are many issues standing in the way of the successful implementation of both cloud and IoT. The integration of cloud computing with IoT and big data is the quite the most effective way to address the next generation of data analytics. This is what we are going to discuss today. And I'll be actually taking up a case study what I have uh, researched on. The vast number of resources available on the cloud can be extremely beneficial for the IoT, while the cloud can gain more publicity to improve its limitations with the real world objects in a more dynamic and distributed manner. So today we are going to, I'm going to talk about an address and focus on convergence of big data, IoT, and cloud computing. The outline of today's talk is somewhere around this introduction of big data, cloud computing, and IoT. So giving you a bit of an idea what big data is, what cloud computing is, and what IoT means, and then how what is the relationship between why we are talking about convergence and what is the, before we really start talking about convergence, we really need to understand that what is the relationship between big data, cloud computing, 
cloud computing, IoT, big data, IoT, so that, you know, how do they converge? At what point do they converge and how they can be integrated on one platform to deliver, you know, uh, uh, deliver or provide decision making process for the organization a more optimized cost effective way and then in the towards the end of my talk i'll be discussing applications of big data cloud computing and iot so big data cloud computing and iot are quite popular ICT paradigms and their features can be combined for shaping the next generation. How and why? That is the question. And it is important to understand that to undergo digital transformation, companies may need to completely re-engineer their current processes to make use of technologies like the IoT, big data analytics, artificial intelligence, and others instead of doing patchwork on existing processes to adapt to digital technologies. Everyone are using one or the other kind of uh, digital technologies. We are leaving our digital footprints wherever we are going on digital platform. So organizations, the processes do exist and when we are talking about these processes, these are actually legacy systems and legacy systems are not capable to handle, you know, these new technologies like big data, like artificial intelligence, like IoT, they cannot. So you need to, we need to re-engineer the processes sitting within the organization so that also to make sure that what we are suggesting or what strategies, business strategies are being developed, it really fulfills the objectives of the organization. It is not an organization platform, is not a you know, dumping ground where we can buy a technology and we can just dump it. What, what kind of, what value will it create? Where it will sit in the value creation process? So, before we start talking about value creation process and what value it brings to the organization, why do we need it, right? So to begin with is big data definition and there is no single standard definition. Big data refers to data sets whose size is beyond the ability of typical database software tools to capture, store, manage and analyze meaning thereby traditional data warehouse are incapable to capture, store, manage, and analyze this data. It may ranges from a few dozen terabytes to multiple petabytes to zettabytes. Data whose scale, diversity, complexity require, in double quotes, new architecture. This architecture needs to be embedded into the enterprise architecture of the organization. Techniques, algorithms, analytics to manage it and extract value and hidden knowledge from it. So when we are talking about a scale, it is volume. Data volume, 44 times increase from 2009 to 2020, from 0 0.8 zettabytes to 35 zettabytes, and from 2020 to 2024, it is expected somewhere around 149 zettabytes. And you can see, you know, a small um, uh, ball to the size of the ball, and you can actually visualize that how big the volume of data is being created these days. And it is increasing exponentially. So data volume is increasing exponentially from tera to peta to exa to we are into zeta bytes. An exponential increase into collected generated data. This information has been created globally for 2010 to 2024, what they are you know, predicting. And it is a volume of data information created worldwide from 2010 to 2021 to 2024. On x-axis, we have 
uh, years. And on y-axis, we have zettabytes. So in 2024, it is somewhere around, you know, 149 zettabytes of data we are expecting that this will be created. So various formats, types, structures, it could be text, numerical, images, audio, video, sequences, time series, social media, multi-dimensional arrays, number of them. Static versus streaming data. Single application can be generating, collecting many types of data. And indeed, data warehouse is not capable to address different variety of data. To extract knowledge, what you need to do, what we as an or what an organization need to do is to integrate or link these diverse data. They need to be linked together to actually find out the answers to the organizational questions. If in today's world, if organizations are just analyzing their in-house data, they are working in, in a vacuum. They are only looking into the internal factors, whereas the external factors are influencing more on organizational decision. So they need to understand that data collected from different sources, different diverse sources need to be, need to be uh, integrated together with, I'm not saying that, of course, in-house data is quite an important data. So, but external, you cannot literally, you cannot leave external data and only take decision on, you know, analyzing internal in-house data. Speed, the velocity of data in which it is being generated. In today's world, data is generated fast and need to be processed fast. Real-time analytics. If you are not getting the information on real time, opportunity lost. And organizations that really do not want to lose this opportunity, right? Online data analytics, late decisions, missing opportunities. So for example, and in my case study, I'll be taking one example for e-promotions, e-coupons. E-promotions, based on your current location, your purchase history, what you like. Send promotions right now for a store next to you, right? You are looking for a mobile phone. You just searched it and you are about to buy it. How about getting a promotion? You know, 10% off on this particular mobile phone. You are quite likely to buy it, right? Healthcare monitoring, sensors monitoring your activities and body. Any abnormal measurements require immediate reaction to it. Big data, so we call it three Vs. It started actually with three Vs and we call it velocity, volume, velocity, variety, but it has extended. Some make it four and we call it veracity. That last, the fourth V is veracity. That is data in doubt uncertainty due to data inconsistency, incompleted data, ambiguities, latencies, deceptions, model approximations. If you are creating a model, data model, or you are training your model on a data set which is not consistent or which is not complete, the data model you are creating will not work. Right, and that is what we call as veracity. That is data in doubt. Harnessing big data. Now in 19, it is not a, you know, business intelligence is when we are talking about why, you know, we are, why we are converging uh, big data with IoT, with cloud computing. It is about decision-making, right decision-making, optimizing the resources. And these things, these words are not new. Business intelligence is not new. What is new is the way we are doing it because of the help of the technology, because of the advent of the you know, internet, because the way people are moving, because the way we are living our today's life, every day's life. So it started in 19, you know, going back, it must have started 
So in 1968, it started with hierarchical database and we call it OLTP, reporting and human analysis on historical data, descriptive analytics, and that is totally based on historical data, which goes into, which we call probably, you know, data is at rest. Data has been cleaned, data has been collected, cleaned and saved into a, you know, database where it is read only, you can only extract the data for the analysis purposes. So once that is being data warehousing, analysis of current data to improve business transactions and OLAP in 1983. In real time analytic processing, we are moving to stream computing from 2000 on onwards, and that is called real time analytic RTAP, that is data in motion. OLTP is your online transaction processing, requires DBMS, OLAP is your online analytical processing done on data warehousing, and RTAP is your real-time analytics processing, which is based on your big data architecture and technology. So who is generating big data? It is many things and this is what we'll be talking about IOT and this is the talk of our today's uh, lecture. So it is Facebook, Twitter, WordPress, YouTube, Flickr, social media and networks, all of us are generating data. Scientific instruments, satellite, microscopes, collecting all sorts of data, printers, you know, mobile devices, tracking all objects all the time, you are, you know, storing so many, uh, downloading so many apps onto that. Sensor technology and networks, measuring all kinds of, you know, data. So the progress and innovation is no longer hindered by the ability to collect data, but the way we manage, we analyze, we summarize, visualize, and discover knowledge from the collected data. What, once the data is being collected, what you want to know, what answer you would like to get from there, what kind of pattern you need to generate from there. This is what, you know, big data scientists would need to address or need to understand. So from the collected data in a timely manner and in a scalable fashion, the model of generating, consuming data has changed. Going back, old model, few companies are generating data, all others are consuming data. So there's a, uh, you know, organizations are generating data and we as people only consuming data. Today, all of us are generating data and all of us are consuming data. What's driving big data? It is, you know, from low to high business value. You really want to, the organizations really want to optimize their resources. Take on time decision. So complexity from low to high, low to high. It is business intelligence. And when you are moving, for high business value to high complexity, it is your predictive analytics. So there are three types of analytics. One we call as descriptive, prescriptive, oh, sorry, descriptive, predictive, prescriptive. Descriptive is on um, historical data, you know, trend analysis, pattern you are generating based on historical data. Predictive is you're predicting what will happen. Prescriptive is how to stop it. Prescribe. When you go and, you know, see a doctor, he uh, checks you and he prescribes a medicine. And this is what we call as prescriptive, prescribing the solution. Ad hoc, it is, you know, when we talk about business intelligence, it is ad hoc query and reporting. What do you want to know? One particular answer and ad hoc. 
data mining techniques, structured data, typical sources, small to mid-sized data sets. Predictive optimization, complex statistical analysis, all types of data, many data sources, very large data sets, and more of a real time. Value of big data analytics. Big data is more real time in nature than traditional data warehouse applications. So if you look in here, you know, traditional data warehouse architectures, that is exadata, teradata, they are not well suited for big data apps. Shared nothing, massively parallel processing, scale out architectures are well suited for big data apps. Enabling big data analytic applications. These are the mature analytic applications are improve operational, you know, where operational efficiencies have been improved. Supply chain optimization, marketing campaign optimization, where increase revenues, alg algorithmic trading, achieve competitive differentiation is in-house custom analytic applications. Remove. Maturing analytic applications is portfolio optimization, risk management. What is the next best offer? And revenues increasing ad targeting optimization, yield optimization. Achieve competitive differentiation is in-house custom analytic applications. Emerging analytic applications are chronic disease prediction and prevention. Customer churn prevention. It is very, you know, quite cost, uh, uh, costly to bring new customers to the organization. So why not to keep them? You know, the, the why, why customers are leaving the organization. And that is what we call as customer churn prevention. Product design optimization. What customers require. Give them before what they ask for it. Design of experiments, optimizations, brand, product market, and target personal, personalized, you know, marketing is what, you know, big data analytic application is all about. So IoT refers to a system of connected physical objects via the internet and why they are being used. They are being used for collecting, transferring data over the internet. We all are being connected in one or the other way. We are zooming. Zoom is collecting our data. <laughs> we are connected. You know, one device is connected with other device with, you know, having an IP address. The thing in IoT can refer to a person or any device which is assigned through an IP address. A thing collects and transfers. What it does, it collects and transfers the data over the internet with help of embedded technology. And that is how we all are connected using IoT. So we all are generating, uh, you know, generating data and we all are connected. So these are your big data sources, which are, you know, See, media as a big data source, images, video, audios, podcasts, social media platforms, Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, Instagram, cloud as a big data source, public, private, or third-party cloud platforms, web as a web big data source, data publicly available on the web, IoT as a big data source, data generated from the interconnection of IoT devices, databases as a big data, traditional and modern data bases. That is in-house and we are still, whenever, whether it is descriptive, predictive, prescriptive, it is the big data architecture is built on the existing architecture of the um, organization. <laughs> Cloud computing, internet to store, manage now. remove the costs associated with the processing having a you know you you still you can have a dumb computer and still get the uh, fast analytical capability using cloud cloud computing so internet to store manage process data using 
a network of remote servers hosted on the internet rather than a local server or a personal computer provides flexibility and removes the cost associated with the local server or a personal computer so everyone can have you do not have to have a uh, you know your own personal computer or a, a local server where you can process the data so when it comes to cloud computing it can be you know classification of cloud computing services involves infrastructure so it removes the it it gives the flexibility of the infrastructure as a service it gives a flexibility of software as a service saas and it gives a flexibility of platform as a service pass it also provides because analytics is becoming so much of data is being generated that this these data need to be analyzed for the competitive advantage of the organization so it is also providing analytic as a service so what they do is they are packaging the complete analytic platform and providing it as a service infrastructure as a service what it does it provides all the infrastructure such as operating systems networking security servers for developing applications services for deploying databases development tools iaas provides offers entire infrastructure along with the maintenance related tasks so the consumer the user doesn't have to worry about the infrastructure related maintenance plus what they are using platform it offers resources like object storage runtime queuing database but what the consumer has to do it is the configuration and implementation related tasks that is that depends on the consumer how you would like to configure and implement the platform they will provide all the resources right cloud will provide all the resources like you know runtime databases queuing everything but you need to as a consumer configuration and implementation tasks needs to be completed software as a service most facilitated one instead of downloading having a software on your you know laptop or your everything goes on to the cloud so offers all the necessary settings and infrastructure provided iaas for the platform and infrastructure are in place this is quite a new one analytics as a service as with the generation of an enormous amount of data cloud computing is playing a significant role in the storage management it is not only about the growth of big data but also the expansion of data analytics platforms like hadoop when we said big data we said it comes in different forms structured unstructured semi structured audio video sensors then that need to be analyzed that need to be stored that need to be saved collected first collect it store it save it analyze it a process it analyze it visualize it so data analytics platform hadoop is being required so as a result it is creating new opportunities in cloud computing organizations like aws google and microsoft they are offering their own big data systems in a very cost efficient manner which is scalable for businesses of all sizes how much capacity is being required for one organization so it provides subscription based data analytics software and procedures through the cloud atlas metal they have in 2017 they have actually given a table where they have compared the iot with cloud computing 
So what they have said is, what is the characteristics of IoT with cloud computing? IoT is pervasive. Things are everywhere. And these are real world objects. This is the characteristic of IoT, I IoT everywhere. Whether it is sensor, satellite, mobile phone, Facebook, Twitter, Zoom, everywhere. Cloud computing is ubiquitous. Resources are available from everywhere. Gone are the days when you had a, you know, a file on your desktop and you couldn't access it. Save it on OneDrive and you can access it from anywhere from this, you know, uh, no matter where you are and it doesn't matter, you know, geographical locations doesn't matter. So these are virtual resources. Processing capabilities, limited computational, virtually unlimited. Storage, limited storage or no storage, unlimited. When it comes to cloud computing, this is what we are talking about unlimited connectivity internet as a point of convergence it uses the internet for delivering the services big data is a source of big data iot is a source of big data so this is where the convergence starts it is a means by which to manage big data Big data, why we are having big data? We are having big data because of IoT. Everyone is using, you know, one or the other kind of digital devices. They are leaving their digital footprints. So if they are using IoT objects, they are generating big data. So unlimited amount of data is being generated. Can we save it into traditional data warehouse system? No, we cannot. So what do we need? Cloud. That is where. Even if we can have Hadoop onto our, you know, personal computers or, you know, it is quite expensive. So it is a means by which to manage big data. So the last, you know, uh, row actually gives a bit of a hint that how and where we are heading towards when we say convergence of IoT, generating big data, cloud computing, managing big data. So big data to cloud computing. This is uh, usually as a computer scientist, we always everywhere or wherever we go, whatever process we need to analyze it is done on IPO basis. That is input, process, and output. So big data analytics, you know, is your input. Different variety, velocity, values, variability, veracity, visualization, val value, virtual, and this is what your front end is, you know? It could be structured, unstructured, semi-structured, and this is the client interface, front end client interface. You do ETL, extract, transform, load, that is the process, for data analytics, you use Hadoop, MapReduce, RDBMS, not only SQL. That is, it is not only structured query language. If you can see that it is overlapping, you know, big data analytics to data analytics, it is overlapping, ETL, right? And then moving on to cloud computing, Provider, services, private, public, hybrid, IS, SaaS, PaaS, and that is your backend. Result analysis and visualization where you are processing it, right? It could be your HDFS, Hadoop Distributed File System, or your GFS, which is your Google File System. GFS is implemented especially for meeting the rapidly growing demands of Google's data processing needs. That is how big Google is. They require their own file system to process the data. 
tell me a day, a single day when you are not using Google and see that how many times in a day you are using Google. Every time, every information you want to end, Google is collecting that data. You know, when you're applying for a project or you're looking for a university or you're trying to do some, some research on understanding anything new, what Google is doing, Google is capturing your idea. You are searching for something, some, you know, an idea came into your mind and you started searching for it, right? And that idea is really very uni unique, but because you are using Google platform, Google is collecting your data. And if it is a new and novel, well, there you go. This is what it is. HDFS, Hadoop Distributed File System, that is implemented for the purpose of running Hadoop Map Reduce, you know, Map and Reduce. That is a complete different uh, technology and um, uh, lecture about it. So created as an open source frame, Apache Hadoop, Apache, it is Apache Spark, Apache Kafka, there are a lot of big data ecosystem. If you go and look into big data ecosystem, it is huge right many technologies are there but for an organization which technology fits the best is what the you know big data scientist needs to understand and need to suggest and that is where the data strategy big data strategy objectives tasks and data sources play a role created as an open data source framework for the users of different clients with different needs different clients with different needs. There are a lot many technologies available. So attaching those technologies and architecture can be implemented, but which, which technology suits? There could be a, you know, uh, if the data fits into any one of the categories I said, whether it is high volume, high velocity, high veracity, it fits in, in the category of big data. So, for, for processing different characters, data having different characteristics, different architecture is being required. So this is variety, data complexity, velocity, big data to volume, right? And then this, these are your IoT audio, video, sensor, image, satellite, scientific, many data, right? It goes into your Hadoop file system, GFS, or some kind of data storage. And that is the reason it has not been named anything over here. And then that goes for analysis. It could be your reports, query, analysis tools, or experimental data. It could be anything. It goes for the experimental data analysis, query reports. It goes in there another data set of data comes up again it does you know the processing where the convergence is the convergence is iot generates big data iot generates big data cloud manages big data helps in processing big data reduces the cost of processing it right so it is service it could be service as a uh, software as a service platform as a service can be used. So this is your platform as a service. This is your IOT and over here, it is your big data. So what they are doing is, you know, generating data subscription, data acquisition, device management, and it is your big data IOT. And this is your end cloud. And this is your big data where all, all the data is being aggregated, transformed, load, persistent storage, takes for analytics and results are being produced as reports. Understanding the report is another thing. Visualizing the report is, you know, when you have, you have generate processed the data, there are different ways to analyze the data. I'm going to just, uh, we are, we have got another 10 minutes and I'll be quickly running over you know, this complex event processing, a case study which we conducted in 2000, uh, two, two years ago, almost two years ago. So according to IDC, the total volume of data will reach 163 
zeta bytes in 2025, quite in sync with what I said, 149 in 2024. So it is expected that 80% of this will be unstructured, unstructured data, right? You cannot save it in, in a column, in a row and column format. Legacy systems are not capable of analyzing data sets of unstructured data. The generation and storage of data can and will continue to grow exponentially. And legacy systems are not capable of addressing the growth of unstructured data. Legacy systems cannot deliver results of analytics at a real time because of the cost and complexity. And many legacy systems were built to deliver data in batches. And sometimes you really need to do the, you know, need to have a real time analytics. <coughs> So they cannot furnish continuous flow of information for real-time decisions. Complex event processing, CEP, architecture, developed to be used in the architecture for integrating legacy systems and data with big data solutions using open source technologies and shows how CEP architecture can be applied to the use of electronic coupon distribution services. So what we, do, what we did was that we created an architecture using CEP to deliver electronic coupon distribution services. Complex event processing is a technique for tracking, analyzing and processing data as an event happens and is useful for big data because it is intended to manage data in motion. So we wanted to analyze data in motion that where the you know, <laughs> customers are. Data in motion is processed and communicated based on business rules and processes. For decisions to be better informed, data used for decision-making must be timely, complete, accurate, accurate, trusted, valid, reliable, and relevant. CEP utilizes data generated from moment to moment from different emerging sources, geolocational data, sentiment data, sensor data, what I'm trying to buy. If I can only have a coupon, you know, what I'm going to buy, and I, I'm quite likely to redeem that coupon. The conventional approach to distribute coupon is to issue identical coupons regularly. And it comes with, you know, in your mail, mailbox. Now, how many of us have really used those coupons? I usually forget it. You know, when I'm going, I, the paper-based coupons are the gone, you know, gone era kind of things. The conventional approach to distribute coupons faces many disadvantages. Conventional distribution systems are slow, have long lead times. Coupons do not get to the targeted customers. So if I am looking for that coupon, I may not be having it in my mail. Redemption rates are low. And the research says that 1% of the distributed coupons were only used. That is, I'm talking about 1998, and this research was being done by Anand et al. And 1%. So printing the coupon, uh, distributing the coupon really costs money, and only 1% were being used. CF, CEP is used across many industries in a variety of use cases, including finance, airlines, in finance, trade analysis, fraud detection, airlines, operations monitoring, healthcare claims, processing, patient monitoring, energy, outrage detection, telecommunications, predicting that. CEP was developed at Stanford University in the mid 1990s by Professor David Locan in 2002. The goal of CEP is to enable information contained in the events flowing through all of the layers of the enterprise IT infrastructure to be discovered, understood, and what kind of impact it can bring on high level management goals and business processes. And then 
acted upon in real time to make well-informed decisions. So the conventional way of coupon distribution is we are getting it from manufacturers, stores, and paper coupons are sent to customers using newspapers, magazines, etc., and not delivered when customers want them, right? These here are different type of customers. Most of the customers may not need it and they, they just throw it in the bin. So from, <laughs> there's so much of, you know, overhead, you are printing it, distributing it, then it is going into the recycling bin without as a waste and not being used at all. Workflow models of ECD. ECD says, I'm looking for a store right now and you are moving with your really smart gadget what you call as your smartphone. This is my ECDS architecture, where all I'm getting is all member data, store data, analyze it, where the person is, geolocational information, where the customer is, what he's looking at, give that information, give that coupon to him. He is very likely to use that coupon. To accomplish the workflow model of ECDS, the components required to construct the architecture to support ECDS are as follows. Sensing devices such as mobile, Facebook, Twitter, creating structured and unstructured data. Data platform, services for storage of structured data, CEP and Hadoop. Navigation to internal or external application hosted on cloud and customers and customer systems where the coupons will be delivered. These are my architectural components, all your, what you call as IOT, what we call as cloud application, and it goes to the user. And this is data storage and processing platform is on cloud. It goes navigation, it goes to the user. Design, it was actually being, you know, motivated by, the motivation has come from Lukem's 2002, gives the following steps. Design a new process, re-engineer the existing process, convey design to stakeholders and form consensus, simulate on ex expected data and update design integrate into system, test and update design, monitor upgraded systems, modify system based on monitored results or business requirements. This is my big data architecture for CEP for coupon distribution. We have got all users, web servers, login history list, your we used Apache Kafka and Apache Spark for batch and stream processing HDFS for real time and HDFS for batch processing. And then for its real time analytics and for batch analytics, it was being generated. Information processing, data event is happening somewhere, complex event processing is being used based on the business rules, member information, all other information, goes into this CEP and result is being sent to the customers. The way our study found results achieved by using C ECDS is comparison features, use of coupons, 46% of coupons were used. Conventional coupon, 5% coupons were used. Receiving discount coupon in, yes, 89%. Customers received online coupon on time. Only 15% received coupon on time, conventional. Customer satisfaction, 14% increase in customer satisfaction from 50% to 64%. 2% increase in customer rated as satisfied. And customer royalty retention rate increased to 66%, which is 10% higher. 56% customers are loyal to their stores. Customer cheer. This is also an example to that. So visualization of the results, conventional coupons, you know, the red is in conventional coupons and this is blue is in ECDS. So quite a good result we received. 
these are the references I have used for my presentation today. Now, question time. Do we have any questions? Thank you very much, guys, for listening to the talk on convergence on big data, cloud computing, and IoT. Thank you, Mina, for the great talk. It was very informative, and I'm sure everyone found it insightful too. Now we open the floor to questions. Do we have any questions? Please feel free to post your questions in the question and answers tab. Um, so the first question is from Victor. Um, hi, Mina, could you give an example of analytics as a platform? Oh, yes, uh, Microsoft, uh, you can actually use Microsoft Azure for analytics. You can actually look, uh, have you got, if you have got a subscription of Microsoft Azure, you can use it as analytics, for analytics. I have been using it for my Hortonworks is providing, uh, you know, uh, cloud analytics as a platform. SaaS is providing analytics as a platform. Uh, uh, cancerous, I know one of the person who is using analytics as a service for their research, actually, where all data modeling and everything can be actually done. So instead of having integrating are different layers, you have it, you bring it into one package. And you do not actually need to download it onto your desktop. You can run it from there on, uh, you can run it from the browser. I hope that helps. Thank you, Mina. Do we have any other questions? Mm -hmm. No, I think, um, I think that is it. Is it? Because we don't have any more questions, which means your presentation was great. I think everyone learned everything possible. So that is good. Or maybe we can wait a minute or so in just in case if any other question comes up. Yep, 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 yep. Thank you. IBM is providing uh, uh, analytics as a, you know, uh, as a service. They're Watson analytics and all the, you know, if you are using Watson analytics, they are providing it as a service. Okay, I think that is it. So thank you everyone for attending the talk and a big thanks to Mina for taking our time to share her knowledge on IoT. For tomorrow, we have Saurabh Mandal giving the workshop session on fundamentals of data handling at 5 p.m. So please ensure you have Jupyter Notebook installed on your desktops or laptops so as to save time during the workshop. If you're unsure where to download it from, we'll be sending the necessary links to you tomorrow before the event. I look forward to seeing you all tomorrow and in the upcoming events of the symposium. Take care and stay safe. Thank you, Priya. Thanks. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.